Hi everyone. In this tutorial, I will be sharing about molecular fingerprints. Molecules can be represented in many ways. This tutorial will introduce you about molecular fingerprints. It is a very simple representation that often works well for small drug-like molecules. To get started with DeepChem in Colab, you need to install DeepChem and RDKit. RDKit is a very useful Python library which is an open source chem informatics software and it is used by deep chem in the backend so what is a fingerprint deep learning models always takes an array of numbers as their input for example you need to train a set of images using a neural net or uh, words with neural net you convert them into an array or a vector and then you feed it into a model the same goes with molecules. You need to represent a molecule as an array or one or more arrays of numbers. Many but not all types of models require their inputs to have a fixed size. This can be a big challenge for molecules since different molecules have a different number of atoms. If we want to use these types of models, we need somehow need to represent variable sized molecules with a fixed size arrays. Fingerprints are designed to address these problems. A fingerprint is a fixed length array where different elements indicate the presence of different features in the molecule. If two molecules have similar fingerprints then it means that they have a similar kind of features and therefore they likely will have similar chemical properties. DeepChem supports a number of fingerprints and for this particular tutorial we will use a fingerprint called as Extended Connectivity Fingerprint or ECFP for short. They are also sometimes called as Circular Fingerprint. So here is a brief explanation of how ECFP algorithm future fingerprints and molecule. The algorithm begins by classifying atoms based only on their direct properties and bonds. Each unique pattern in the molecule becomes a future. For example, carbon atom bonded to two hydrogen atoms and two heavy atoms would be a future. And for each future, a particular element of the fingerprint corresponding to that future is set to 1. This happens for any molecule that contains the future. Say for example, for all molecules containing the future of a carbon atom bonded to two hydrogen and two heavy, that future will be set to 1. It then iteratively identifies new futures by looking at large circular neighborhood and so and then like one specific future is bonded to two other specific futures becomes an higher level future and the corresponding element for is also set to one for any molecules containing that higher level future. This continues for a fixed number of iteration most often two and the end is like we will have a fingerprint ECFP fingerprint representation of the molecule. Let's take a look at data set that has been futurized with ECFP. For the analysis purposes for this demonstration, we will be using TOX21 data set. Uh, TOX21 stands for Toxicology in the 21st century. The data set contains qualitative toxicity measurement for over 8000 compounds and 12 different targets including like nuclear receptors and stress res response pathways. The raw data set contains the smile string representation of molecules and by using the ECFP futurizer we are converting the raw molecule which is represented as a smile string into a fixed length arrays that is of fingerprints of those molecules. You see that the future array has shape 6264 and 1024. What this means is that the data set contains around 6200 samples and the futurized shape of the array is 1024. That is each molecule is represented by an array of length 1024. And we see that the shape of Y is 12. This means 6212. This means that there are like for each 6200 samples there are like 12 prediction targets. The, it means so 
we see that there are like 12 prediction targets and it is because that this data set is a multi-task data set. So TOS, TOX21 contains information about toxicity of molecules over 12 different assays. And assay is something like an experimental procedure performed on target, performed on a target, in this case molecule, to check the presence or to quantitatively measure the presence or the a amount of the target activity like say you can measure the solubility of a molecule or you can present pre check the and specific assay can check the presence of um, the what to say uh, like how a molecule reacts with another molecule and so on so the data set records the result of 12 assays each as a different task Let's also take a look at the weights array. We see that the weights are mostly 1 or close to 1 and for some scenarios we have 0. A weight of 0 indicates that a missing data that is the Y label for that task that is an assay were not performed for that molecule. So say we, we do not perform an experiment for a molecule then we will not have the target label for that molecule. In that case, the weight for a corresponding task is zero. Setting the weight for a sample or a sample task pair is zero causes the molecule to be ignored during fitting and evaluation and it will not have any effect on the loss function or other metrics. Most of the other weights are close to one but not exactly one. This is done to balance the overall weights of positive and negative samples on each task. Uh, the idea is this, say your data set has a, a lot of positive samples and a very few negative samples. Then what happens is that the model which you train gets biased towards the positive samples. Like they may just learn that most of the training samples are non-toxic in case non-toxic is given a positive label. And therefore becomes biased towards identifying molecules as non-toxic. So to overcome this bias, we set the labels for negative samples uh, a higher weight for negative samples. This, by setting a higher weight for negative samples, more importance will be given to the negative samples during training. Now we will train a model on the finger hands. So in earlier tutorials, we have used graph convolution model, which is a, a fairly complicated architecture that takes a complex set of inputs. Because fingerprints are so simple, just a single fixed length array, we can use a much simpler type of model. Here we will be using a multitask classifier. A uh, multitask classifier is simply a stack of fully connected layers. And in this example says that there are like 12 tasks associated with the data set. And, you, and we say that the, we asked, we choose the we choose a single hidden layer of bit 1000 and we also tell it that each input will have 1024 futures. futures. So you may wonder why not we can train a separate model for each task. But it turns out that uh, training a single model for multiple tasks often works better. Well, let's train and evaluate our model. So we are training our model for 10 epochs and we are using the ROC AUC score as an evaluation metric. So we have gotten ROC AUC score on the training set 0.95 while we have a test score of 0.68 that which, which is on the test data set. So uh, DeepGAM supports a number of other fingerprints like molecular assess key fingerprint that is MACCS key fingerprint Pubchem fingerprint, Maltovec fingerprint. Maltovec is something like how word to vec happens for is for sentences and words. Maltovec is some a similar representation learning for molecules. The full documentation of these fingerprints are available here. You can try using different fingerprinting techniques on a data set and compare the results of the model. If you are excited about DeepCam and want to get more involved, there are some things which you can do right now. You can start DeepCam on GitHub. This will help us build a more awareness of the DeepCam project. You can start using DeepCam 
and the deep game guitar channel hosts a number of scientists developers and enthusiasts who are interested in deep learning for life sciences you can join the conversation there post your questions or any help regarding deep game and you can also join the deep game forum and introduce yourself thank you